Celtic Badass of the Week showcases a person of Celtic heritage each week. Those who exemplify the give no shit attitude and come out on top. They may come from our past or our present, but rest assured they come from all walks of life and legend. They are men, women, even old ladies and pirate queens. Now you don't have to be a muscled up kilt in a fur kilt swinging a mighty sword. You can just be a 4 foot 11 Welsh woman and suffragette who knows jujitsu. Now most of these badasses are all too real. And while some of these are only legend, they're badass legends. The only prerequisite is Celtic blood and badasses. This week's badass, Lieutenant Colonel William Donovan. One of the Fighting 69's most famous members, an Irish-American serving in an Irish unit, William Wild Bill Donovan is the only individual to have ever received all four of the United States' highest awards. Donovan initially commanded the 1st Battalion, 165th Infantry during World War I, but was soon promoted to commander of the entire 165th Infantry Regiment. While serving in France, he suffered a shrapnel wound in the leg and was nearly blinded by a mustard gas attack. But this badass trudged on. His valor earned him the French Croix de Guerre, as well as the Distinguished Service Cross for the assault on um, Ace Marne, later depicted in the movie Fighting 69th during James Cagney. Now, Donovan went on to serve in World War II. However, U.S. intelligence before World War II was basically non existent. Colonel William Wild Bill Donovan was a well respected lawyer and veteran of the First World War, in which he earned Medal of Honor, Distinguished Service Cross, and Three Purple Hearts. Between the wars, he traveled extensively and met with many foreign dignitaries. However, his chief concern was on establishing the American equivalent of Britain's intelligence services, MI6. His extensive travel and ideas earned him the respect and friendship of President Roosevelt. And when the President established the Office of the Coordination of Information, he named Donovan the Director. Now Donovan immediately set to work on tangling the bureaucratic mess that was the American intelligence services. It was much more complicated than he anticipated. Now he met a roadblock and most notably J. Edgar Hoover of the FBI, who when not dressing up in ladies clothes ran his agency like a tyrannical dictator. But Donovan set him straight in badass fashion. During this time the majority of intelligence for the Office of Coordination of Information came from the British as did the training for the new operatives. Now, After the attack on Pearl Harbor, it became clear that the United States needed a greater intelligence capacity. To accomplish this, President Roosevelt issued a Presidential Military Order on June 13, 1942, creating the Office of Strategic Services, the OSS with the mission of collecting and analyzing strategic information for the Joint Chiefs of Staff and to conduct special operations not assigned to other agencies. William Donovan was reactivated in the U.S. Army at his World War I rank of colonel and put in charge of the organization. Now, now that Donovan had his intelligence agency, he needed to fill the ranks. With no prior experience to draw on, he and those he recruited would be starting essentially from scratch. However, Donovan was given just the right man for the job and won Lieutenant Colonel Garland Williams. A successful law enforcement officer and officer in the Army Reserve, Williams took Donovan's intent to create an American intelligence service based on the British models and made it uniquely American, though he would require British help to get it started. Now it was decided the OSS would be responsible for intelligence and counterintelligence, psychological warfare, guerrilla and irregular warfare, to include sabotage and most importantly coordinating resistance movements within with each area of responsibility handled by a specialized branch. Now once the training areas, our national parks outside of Washington DC, were established and trainers were in place, Williams set about creating a curriculum to train the new operatives, basically creating a military basic training style program that would kill the average badass soldier. Now a witness to the training called it stomach turning and appalling. Once the students had passed preliminary and basic operator training, they moved on to advanced training. This training involved what Lieutenant Colonel Williams referred to as schemes, mock attacks on real targets in the U.S., 
Now, teams of students would be assigned missions against bridges, railroads, and plants in areas such as Baltimore, Pittsburgh, in which they were instructed to infiltrate secure locations, plant fake explosives, or to recover some kind of sensitive data. Most of these missions were completed successfully, however, a few teams were arrested by local police or the FBI. Throughout the operator's training, the emphasis was always on independent thinking initiative, resourcefulness, personal courage, and building confidence. Military discipline took a backseat to the need for candidates to become individual fighters and guerrilla warriors, as opposed to soldiers who needed orders to operate. Basically, he made a badass factory. Now, once the operatives completed their training, they were shipped to war zones all over the world, where they conducted irregular warfare, sabotage, and direct action missions behind enemy lines in operational groups. Now they were the predecessor to modern special forces. President Truman would later disband the Office of Strategic Services, the OSS, in October of 1945, but its legacy and missions would live on. Seeing the success of Colonel Donovan's OSS, the Central Intelligence Agency was formed two years later to take up many of its former missions and to establish their training curriculum the CIA used everything the OSS had created. A short time later, the U.S. Army jumped on the Donovan bandwagon and formed the Special Forces, which took up the missions of irregular warfare and foreign internal de defense. Now, Colonel Donovan's influence is still evident in our intelligence and military today, and he's honored with the U.S. Special Operations Command shoulder sleeve insignia, nearly identical to the OSS patch as well as the Fairburn Sykes fighting knife emblem on Delta Force's shoulder sleeve insignia. But his real contribution is, though the OSS was a fledgling intelligence service at the outset of World War II, his accomplishments and organization set the stage for the strongest clandestine services in the modern world.